In this video, we're going to be discussing the good and bad sides of reselling. And actually, if you want to learn more about reselling and want to start getting into um, buying and selling sneakers for a profit, you might want to pay attention to our words from our sponsor, Addict. Addict is a fast bot you can run on your iOS device. It supports over 85 sites and has a quick and easy to use interface. They'll be restocking with very limited copies on the 1st of August at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you head over to the link in the description for everything you need to know. Now, on with the video. Now, as you already know, reselling is a very controversial topic because, you know, some people love it, some people hate it. Some people think that people charging $700 for a sneaker that was sold at a price of $200 should be burned. And by the way, before we continue further, here's a little disclaimer because I remember when I made a video about fake sneakers, people didn't watch the video and started commenting down below, you don't know me, I buy sneakers because yeah, I don't want to pay you guys for, you know, what, what work do you guys do? You just buy them and then sell them at a high price. Uh, so here's a timestamp for why I talk about why it's good to resell sneakers. And here's a timestamp when I explain why it's bad to resell sneakers. So before you make a comment, head over to those timestamps. I'd look at both sides. Now let's get on with the video. Now I pride myself on being an entrepreneur. Like I love building businesses. I love working and building my personal brand and my and reinvesting back into this business, which is media creation and content creation. And I know that a lot of people, when they sneak a resell, becoming an entrepreneur is what they see themselves as as well. Because look at the business model. You build your own personal business, advertise it, market it, and then grow attraction, grow an audience. And then with that audience, it could, becomes easier for you to sell things to that targeted demographic, which is sneakerheads. And then you can make a profit uh, the bigger that you grow. Because if you think about it, a lot of people right now in Australia, in any parts of the world, they are really learning more about this reselling culture. They're buying and selling and they're building connections within the community. And then, yeah, they're securing a profit along the way so that for them, uh, if they need money to buy most shoes for them personally, they can take the profits they made from sneaker reselling and use that to buy things whatever that they want. I know that when I needed cash and then I was low on funds, I needed stuff, uh, I was buying and reselling sneakers, I was probably cleaning them, selling them for a higher price and then that's where I sort of hustled and made my money and then I sort of grew from that and then I started investing more, putting that to multiple streams of income that puts money into my pocket. And it leads me to my next point which is it actually is a really good experience to big economic concepts just like supply and demand, consumer sentiment, investment value and exponential value as well. Uh, obviously with the economic concept of supply and demand, that's obviously with sneakers. The less supply of sneakers, the higher the demand tends to be and then the price is subject and relative to that. And then that's where you really get the hype aspects of these sneakers. Um, the, the less amount of shoes there are, the more limited the sneaker release is, the more hype or demand that generally tends to follow that sneaker release. And then that's where you get these absurd sneaker prices that you see on StockX or in any other consignment stores. It's just the way that the model is. And then I know that a lot of people don't really like that, but I guess that's the way that this is all structured. Now I did post my Instagram story and that was only a couple hours ago, so I didn't really have that many responses, but I did get a couple of responses and I don't know if it helps because it was a little bit biased because most of the people that did reply were in fact resellers just because a lot of them follow my account, which you can follow at Joshua J Salvador. Okay, I'm done. But um, they did have some pretty good points. I have them on the screen right there. Um, I don't know if they're biased just because they're sneaker resellers, but I don't know if you can sort of see where they're coming from if you are against the resale culture. And one thing that I really like is that price is actually perceived. And I do agree with that. There are some people that spend thousands and thousands of dollars on like movie scripts or something or like whatever. And then uh, to some people, they might just be a piece of paper with writing on it. But to other people, these are like, you know, the first draft of the the Godfather movie. So I know that these pieces to some people, like I know when I first started getting into sneakers, the people around me, like my friends, they were like, like, why would you spend a couple hundred bucks on a pair of shoes? You know, just buy Kmart shoes. They do the same thing. Like people didn't really understand it. So that's where you really get it. And sneakers isn't the only thing that has a resell culture. Baseball cards, basketball cards, cars, um, any sort of commodity does have a resell culture behind it. So I, I don't think a lot of people understand that. And if you want to be angry at the people reselling shoes get angry at the people at auctions and all that those are like a step up from buying and selling limited sneakers and by the way i'm friends with a lot of resellers so i can say this for a fact i've seen a lot of resellers they have 
their houses they have the rooms stacked to the top with shoe boxes and i'm sure that it's a pretty cool thing when you can have sneakers as like a side hustle or even a full-time job i've seen a lot of people have that and it's a pretty cool thing when you can have the best and the newest and the most hyped sneakers in hand and it doesn't really mean anything because you're going to sell them anyway but it's just nice to have them you know I would love to have these off whites in my hand and then flip them later for a profit. Like, isn't that cool for a sneakerhead? Like, imagine if you're a car enthusiast and you get to work with the best and the most fastest supercars and whatnot. That would just, that, that to me is just amazing. And the fact that young teenage sneakerheads can do that and can resell to buy more sneakers and then keep that system going is just incredible for me. Like in the times that we live in now. Let's talk about why people hate reselling. Obviously, I can relate to these because I have taken so many L's on sneaker drops and it's not even funny. The Grateful Dead Dunks and the Off-White Jordan 4s, they dropped, you know, the last two days. Two very painful L's and I cried myself to sleep last night. <laughs> But yeah, and that leads me to my first point why I think that people don't like resellers and that's because imagine that you want to buy a pair of sneakers just to wear them and you can't compete with those botters that run 70 tasks or those automated checkouts, you know, buy recapture bypasses. You know, you can't compete with those people. Like you're trying to like type in your credit card details. They've already got like 50, you know, 50 tasks running and they're already sold out. And then they've got like 30 pairs, you got zero. And yeah, that does get pretty frustrating if you just want to wear it instead of profit off Nike or Adidas, you know. And to add salt to the wound, they just come at you with a $2,000 price tag when you just only wanted to pay 160. And it just gets frustrating because, you know, at that point, they're basically trolling you. Like, aha, I got, I got 20 pairs, man. If you want a pair, like 2,000 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then you got no other alternative but to pay that insane resale price because then you don't get the sneakers. But I think that's why people gravitate towards buying uh, fake sneakers or buying replicas because if you're buying a sneaker at a resale price, you're not actually supporting Nike or Adidas. You're actually supporting the reseller and putting the profits from that sneaker into their pockets. So I feel like the people that are salty at the resellers, they're just like, oh no, I ain't funding your next freaking sneaker purchase. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my business elsewhere. And then they go to the fake companies, they buy it for like $200 and then they're just like, they think it's a win because they just wanted the look of the sneaker without paying the insane price tag that comes with it. So I do think that that's why people buy fakes because you know it's just in spite of um the insane resale culture that we've been seeing and i know that the botting community is really really hated on when it comes to the og sneakerheads just because you know um back in the day like in the nike talk days and like in the 2005 and 6 era you know people were you know people were pretty like you know there was no bots you know people just lined up for sneaker releases and it's pretty fair honestly like there was fair prices there was just like you know people just buying retro jordans but then when the resale culture started to boom i guess that's when people started leaving the sneaker game and uh, and that is pretty sad because some people think that the sneaker culture is run by resellers and that is pretty much true because the resellers they basically run the market and they decide how much money that this is gonna go for. Like they see the StockX prices and if they wanna sell them really quickly, they list them for like, you know, 10 or so dollars below that. And then the next reseller comes and then they're just like, oh wait, the price is going down. Wait, maybe I should sell mine for $10 less. And then the cycle keeps going. It's like a domino effect. And then that's what happens with the bricked market. People just keep undercutting each other. And then all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, you got a pair of off-whites sitting at $1,000 when like a couple months ago they were at $1,500 because you just have people bricking the market. And if you guys are wondering on where I sit on if you should resell sneakers or not, and I still really stand by when I say that reselling is a really good practice for kids, teenagers and all that, and all sneakerheads that really like shoes, they can literally make a business and become and have a sense of entrepreneurialism by buying and selling sneakers and they can have sneakers in hand. So that's why I really like reselling right now. It's just I really think that it's a really good side hustle for people who genuinely like sneakers and then they just like you know being independent and starting that entrepreneurialism that can later lead and maybe becoming a business owner or becoming like an, a marketer or an advertiser. Selling sneakers is a hustle. You have to find stock. You have to negotiate whatever, you have to meet up, you have to know the market, you have to understand supply and demand, you have to understand all those economical co concepts. Then when you actually get the shoe, you have to market it yourself, advertise it yourself, whatever platforms, eBay, um, Gumtree, Facebook Marketplace, um, 
Instagram most co most commonly, and I've seen resellers go onto TikTok to grow their personal brand, which has been a big success. Um, I actually met a lot of uh, international resellers, just like D Sangle, 760 Dom, um, Pinoy Plug, and then yeah, they've just been growing their brand, and that's actually been paying off because they can market to a wider audience, which means you know they get to move their pairs super quick, they get to give back, and then they get to build their brand. Sneakers is not child's play you know there are real economic concepts with marketing and business aspects towards that so and if you're a reseller i'm sure you can vouch for that in the comment section below there are people that grind like you know 24 7 every single day um, and they don't take breaks because they always have stock coming in. They always communicate with the community and, and all that. And yeah, that's where I stand on the topic of reselling. But I do understand why people don't like resellers. And yeah, it is pretty sad if you just want a pair of sneakers for retail. But yeah, guys, let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts on this topic. It's very controversial, yes. Just know, I know where you guys are coming from when you say that you hate resellers. And yeah, I do understand. And I'm very empathetical towards that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.